How's it going everyone? So I'm going to give you a little overview of what I've been adding to this little side project I'm working on. Basically, I wanted the ability for users to upload images because when you're making YouTube thumbnails, you know, typically you have like some preset images that you might want to do. Like, you know, a lot of YouTubers have like cutouts of their faces, like pointing or making st stupid faces. So I figured we need to allow authenticated users to be able to upload like a, you know, a collection of things that you might use often in your YouTube thumbnails, maybe like a set of 20 stupid faces or something. But uh, I need to style this page, but what I have right now is I have the ability to select a file from my computer. Right now I don't have anything, so let me just take a screenshot of like this. And I'm gonna show you, I can actually click choose file. And I'm gonna go ahead and select that screenshot and click this upload button. And that's actually gonna upload the image to S3. I have a private S3 bucket and you can see here it showed up. Now, one thing I probably want to do real quick while uh, while I'm recording is let's go to that uh, images page. Maybe we could do some type of grid here. Like if I wanted like three column grid or something, I do the same thing with the templates page. Let's just go to the templates page real quick. Uh, pages, I think it's just like templates index or something. And I have grid here. I'm just going to copy this class. I kind of forgot how to do it in Tailwind, but I copy that in. And we should see, hopefully, uh, I'm copying the wrong place. So like, I'm not gonna walk you through all this code, but if I were to wrap this entire thing with that class, I should be able to have that like style be nice. All right, so now they're all in their own little grid. Um, and yeah, so the idea is you can upload your collection of images. Let me kind of show you how I did this, all right? So I am using TRPC, so there might be some stuff that you don't understand what's going on, but the idea is still the same, right? So what kind of happens, and let me just delete some new line characters. I did not prepare for this video, I'll be honest with you all. So I have a form here, and it has the ability to basically have a file input, right? So this is a input type of file, and when they actually select a file, it calls an on change callback on file change. So if I look at the on file change, you'll see here that it's just basically setting the file that the user uploaded to state. Okay. And rename that. And what happens is when the user actually clicks that submit button, which is right here, the upload button, that takes the file that's in state and it's going to use it for this upload image. So this is kind of like the form submission function where we check if there's a file and if there is, we basically call, um, what do we call? Let me put this. We call a git pre-signed URL function, right? So this is actually calling my backend to get a signed S3 URL so the user can upload to a particular place in the S3 bucket, right? So we wanna make sure that you know the things that you upload are secured and also the things that users are seeing back in their dashboard are secured. So I kind of did a video a long time ago about this, but basically you get this pre-signed URL and then you basically do a post request using that form data to the URL that Amazon provides you. And then I'm basically telling um, my page to refetch all the images so that when I upload a new image, it'll show up here, right? So let me kind of walk you through um, what happens when I call get pre-signed URL. So this is a use mutation from TRPC, which is just calling this endpoint here. So what I can do is I can go to the image index file and find that mutation. And notice here we have a function called create pre sign URL. So this is the one we're calling. All this does is it verifies that the user is logged in. And then using that, it creates a new entry in the images table, which I'll kind of talk about in just one second. And then it returns by using the S3 create pre sign post basically a secure URL that the user has 30 seconds to upload their video, their image to, right? And I'm also setting a max length. I think it's set to a megabyte. I might need to tweak these a little bit, maybe make the images larger, maybe make the expired times larger. But basically we're giving them a window of opportunity to upload an image to a key that looks like this, right? So after you upload these images, I wanna show you in Prisma Studio, let me go back, I have an images table that has right now three images. So this is kind of linking the image that was uploaded to the user who uploaded it. And I have a Prisma schema set up for that. Let's just delete this all and I'm gonna kind of show you in the UI. If I were to re-upload that image, 
notice that it's going to create that record in Prisma, or sorry, in my MySQL database. And it has like a unique ID for that image. So this is the image identifier ID that we're going to be using for basically fetching from S3. So let's go to the S3 bucket, refresh, and notice that um, it has a folder here. This is the actual user's ID. Um, every user is going to have their own ID. And I'm going to go ahead and just delete these. Those are That's old data. I don't really want that stuff. But if I go into this, one of those IDs is the, you know, the one I just uploaded. These are kind of stale. I haven't implemented the remove functionality, but if I were to download this directly from S3, it's going to be the exact same image that we just saw earlier, right? So this is the image of uh, that screenshot I took. So that's how, um, that's kind of all working. So basically the user hits that pre-signed post URL, they get a secured URL, which I should probably show you real quick. If I go to my, my network tab, I want to show you that there is a pre-signed, Get images for user, what is it called? Create pre-sign URL. And hopefully I'm not, I had to like kind of clip off the bottom of my screen because my monitor's aspect ratio is not big enough. But if we go ahead and look at the preview, here PC is going to return some data to us. Uh, zoom in just a bit. And you'll see inside of data, we have fields in URL here. So URL, this is like the URL that you actually have to upload from the client to upload your image. And then we have fields. These are just things that you have to pass in. They're like security related policies and whatnot that actually grant me permission to upload within that 30 second window. So that's kind of how it's all working. Um, and then as far as displaying the images, so you'll see that when the page loads, there is a URL request for image.getImages for user, which again, that just returns an array of all the images and that has a bunch of pre-signed get URLs. So let's talk about the pre-signed get URLs. When this page loads, if I could find where that page is, here it is. We are doing a use query somewhere, which is I guess here, and we are calling the images get images for user. And what that's doing is calling a TRPC endpoint to basically, let me see if I can find what file this is in. Here it is. It's basically getting the user's ID and we're getting all the images that are associated with that user. So if they have like 50 users on their account that's uploaded, we're gonna get all 50 of them. And then we loop through every single one and we create a pre-signed URL for that image ID. Okay, so that's granting the user permission to access that image. I think this expires after like 15 minutes or something, but we can make it shorter, but basically this is a way to make sure that all the images that they upload, maybe they're like personal images that are only for their thumbnails and they don't want other people to using. All of those are going to be secured in the bucket. So we have to basically tell our backend to generate a pre-signed URL so that the users can actually download them, right? So if I look back at the UI, at some point that'll return, we get back all the images here. This is the, uh, the use query data we get called images and we map over them, right? So the, the image data, if I look at this, it's called image metadata. So where is that type defined? Well, it is defined, I think, somewhere, I don't really know. It's defined here. Um, basically, it is just a image that has an URL attached to it, right? So this is what we're using the URL to display that image on the front end. If I look for .url, uh, actually, I don't know where I do that. Let's see, image card, we pass in URL here. So right here, this is where we actually display that image using that pre-signed URL, right? And if I were to actually look or inspect this image element, it's pointing to the S3 bucket. So let's just go ahead and look here. You see it's an image that goes to the S3 bucket on Amazon. And then we have like a special key inside of the, we have a signature inside of the URL. So that kind of grants us access to download that. So that's kind of how um, I set up the S3 image upload with a secure endpoint and a secure bucket. I know I kind of went all over the place in this video, but hopefully you learned something about how to do that yourself. I know there's there's more stuff I need to talk about for how did you actually set up the bucket and stuff like that. You know, let's just kind of talk about that real quick. So the bucket, in order to allow the backend to do this, first of all, I had to create a Amazon user with uh, CLI permissions to upload and basically I gave a star access to a bucket, right? So here's the bucket. And then if you look at the permissions of the bucket, I had to set up cores to allow get post and put with all headers. Why does this keep scrolling down? 
all headers and all origins, all right? So that just basically gives me a wildcard permissions to allow any UI to upload directly to my bucket. In production, you probably want to like make this more secure and not put star here. Like if I actually had a real domain, I'd probably need to scope this to that actual domain. In the headers, I probably should also scope down too. But again, I'm just kind of prototyping, just playing around with uh, getting this working. And I think that's all I kind of had to do. I don't think there's any other permissions I had to set up. Oh, I think I also had to uh, turn off by default. I think you can't download anything from a bucket from like a remote URL. In fact, let me turn this back on and see if like this stops working. Confirm. Uh, and let's just refresh this page and see if my app breaks. Yeah, so I think it, you can keep this on, which is probably more secure. Uh, just make sure you have that core stuff set up. So anyway, yeah, if you uh, enjoyed watching this, let me know. I can give a better, more slowed down, thorough tutorial about image S3 uploads to S3 if you want. But I just want to give you an update on a cool feature I added to my application. All right, have a good day and happy coding.